Communication has, by and large, been the key for the development of humanity. From the creation of early language, to the eventual invention of pen and ink, humans' ability to communicate with one another, to share thoughts and ideas, has largely been responsible for their progress as the dominant species on Earth. This key, however, can also be used for more malicious things. For every truth told, there is an equal amount of lies to counter them. The best demonstrations of this misuse of one of humanity's greatest tools is visible in the empire of the rising sun as they declare war on the allies and join the Axis in World War II. During World War II, the expansion of the Japanese Empire led to the integration of many different people. In order to maintain their stability, the Empire of Japan utilized multiple forms of propaganda, both to incorporate their newly captured states into Japan and bolster support for the war effort against the Allies. The government's propaganda, their choice of communication with their citizens, was typically conveyed through three mediums, film, newspapers, and kamishibai. Films were the main and most effective method of propaganda the Japanese used. The film law of 1939 allowed them to abolish films they deemed frivolous, films that contain any social, sexual, or any government deemed inappropriate content were immediately banned. Instead, the government promoted the use of films to elevate the national consciousness. As a matter of fact, the very first things that would be built in newly conquered territories were theaters. Many such theaters were propped up on the Chinese mainland as Japan attempted to get their propaganda films playing in order to placate the Chinese public as soon as possible. By 1945, their film propaganda expanded through Japan, Shanghai, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, in Indonesia. However, films were most effective to the foreign, far away members of the Japanese Empire. For their own citizens, the ones closer to home, Japan preferred the use of newspapers. Anti-fascist newspapers existed before the 1940s, but were purged by the fascist government. Instead, a few newspapers existed and promoted the Japanese Empire. These newspapers published daily, where during the war, their headlines were flooded with page after page of helicopters, soldiers, and battleships. With glorifications of the kamikaze, the divine wind who paid the ultimate sacrifice for their honor and the honor of Japan. Newspapers like Kaijo Nippo, who assisted the government's propaganda campaign, became some of Japan's largest newspaper companies before being shut down by Americans after the war. The newspapers would contain large headlines, lying about Japan's success in the war, political cartoons that undermined the Allies, and inspiring stories whose likelihoods we can never confirm. However, the propaganda did not stop there. Films and newspapers would only reach the upper echelons of society. The average Japanese fisherman or farmer would never be able to see or understand the war if these were the only two pieces of propaganda that the government used to present them with. So the third and arguably most genius form of communication was kamishibai. Kamishibai directly translates to paper drama and is a form of propaganda that is purely unique to Japan. Kamishibai was used to propagate messages and ideologies to the Japanese that the Japanese government encouraged. Entrancing stories would capture the attention of children and adults in both the mainland and in the Japanese occupied regions. Heroic depictions of sacrifice, adventure, honor, and nationalism 
were all central events to Kamishibai propaganda during the Second World War. And it was this, so successful, that caused millions of Japanese farmers to fall in line. Though not all of them enlisted in the war, they were all ready to give up their lives in Banzai attacks, and they were the most willing to die because they only knew of the honor of Japan. They were willing to defend it. Though the Americans were a little better in this respect, many American newspapers depicted Japan as an old vampire, constantly looking to drain the blood of America. This caused many young Americans to wish to fight in the Second World War. This also caused racism against Japanese Americans, as they were sent to internment camps, stripped of their freedom as American citizens. In a feat of intense racism, some Chinese Americans, who were the biggest victims of Japanese imperialism, were also imprisoned in these camps with the Japanese. It is important for us to note, as we study the brutality of the Japanese propaganda machine, that America's hands are not clean either. All three forms of Japanese propaganda shared similar themes, mainly including nationalism and sacrifice, the pride of the Japanese, those who belong to the empire of the rising sun, those who called Nippon their home, Propaganda films and newspapers plucked at the heartstrings of the Japanese. It called for them to rise up in the names of their mothers, their fathers, their countries. It called upon the honor of those who dubbed themselves Japanese. The propaganda told them they were soldiers, convinced them they were warriors, reminded them that they descended from the samurai. It called upon the soldiers to rage, it called upon them to fight and it called upon them to die. And yet, all of it was for a lie. They thought they were the defense, when in reality, they were the spirit of Japan as she rushed to conquer East Asia. The words carried enough power in them to cause millions to die. The words of the propaganda artists were enough to rip away men from their wives, sons from their mothers, and everything in between. The correct and proper use of communication could lead to the buildup of entire civilizations. But something so powerful, so fragile, is also easy to abuse. And it is the abuse of communication, humanity's strongest asset, that leaves millions dead. After the war, when the dust settled, the Tokyo trials were held. As long-term reparation for the war crimes they committed, seven men were sentenced to death. Almost all of them were army generals who had been proven to commit war crimes and had done nothing to stop them. Along with these seven, eighteen were sentenced to prison. And despite everything that all the Japanese fought for, Japan was occupied. Propaganda as a tool is one of humanity's strongest weapons be it for good or evil. Individually, we are some of the weakest creatures on earth, but it is our ability to communicate our thoughts and desires and dreams, our ability to come together and reach understandings that allows us to be great. It's what allows us to build skyscrapers, dam rushing rivers, and build planes of metal that soar through the skies. Propaganda is the skewing of fact from fiction, it is the call of people to fight for something that they may not believe in. The lies that nations tell those at home so they continue to support the leaders in charge in what they do, regardless of whether the things they do are just or not. Japanese propaganda in World War II, though it took many forms, though it had many themes, was an abuse of communication so severe that it caused millions to lose their lives fighting for an honor they should not have been misguided to believe.